Welcome to hour number two, a Friday edition live right here on the morning after on Sports Grid. Sirius XM, channel 159, the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM. And all across the Sports Grid Network, I am Ben Stevens. We'll get to a ton in this second hour. A Wimbledon Championship weekend on the horizon where the men's semifinal match between Novak Djokovic in Camp Nori is now underway. Only one semi today because, of course, the withdrawal of Rafael Nadal due to an ab injury, which means Nick Kyrgios awaits the winner of Novak and Nori right now on center court in Wimbledon, but also on the women's side and also on the streets of New York, Benny and the Bet's own tennis challenge on the streets of New York City. We'll also finish off with some Major League Baseball with our guy Jim Saunas, and we begin right now with the Friday hoops headlines around the WNBA as we're getting close to that playoff push. It's All-Star Weekend in the W this Saturday in Chicago or over this weekend, I should say. And of course, Summer League getting underway last night in Viva Las Vegas. Let's start in the WNBA, the reigning WNBA champs, the best team in the W right now at the top of the table, taking on the worst team yesterday in Indiana, the Sky and the Fever, and a very sharp line set on the FanDuel Sportsbook for yesterday's game between Chicago and Indiana. Nine and a half was that spread in favor of the road team, the Sky, the reigning WNBA champs, and they win by nine, 93 84. Not quite covering by the hook, but still a big victory for Chicago. They had a five-game win streak snapped just two days ago against Minnesota. They get back to their winning ways, six of their last seven, and now a full-game lead in the WNBA standings for that top spot over the Las Vegas Aces. But keep a close eye on the Seattle Storm, Brianna Stewart and Sue Bird in her final year before retirement In the W, they continue to win basketball games. Seven of their last 10, they have won two straight, absolutely pummeling the Los Angeles Sparks yesterday in the city of Angels. And Seattle only a game and a half back now of Chicago for that top spot in the WNBA standings. Toward the bottom half of the league, teams battling it out for a playoff appearance. A big matchup yesterday between the New York Liberty and the Phoenix Mercury, both a game out of that eighth and final spot to earn a position in that playoff picture. There are three teams right now, including the Sparks, the Dream, and the Wings, all with a 10-2 and record that have a one-game advantage over Phoenix and New York. And Phoenix, a big win yesterday, 84-81 for the Mercury, a four-and-a-half-point favorite at home. The Liberty cover that number, but Phoenix snapping a two-game losing skid. New York... A big game two games ago in an upset of the Las Vegas Aces that saw Sabrina Ionescu make history for the Liberty. 31 points, 13 rebounds, 10 assists for her second triple-double of this season. Her third in her WNBA career, already matching the most triple-doubles in a WNBA career, tying a record held by Candace Parker. And because of the 31 points Ionescu scored two nights ago against the Aces, it was the first 30-point triple-double in the history of the WNBA. But the Liberty losing yesterday on the road, the Mercury winning by three, not covering a a four-and-a-half-point spread. We'll take a quick look at the WNBA title odds here in just a moment. But first, we welcome in our Sports Grid Radio audience, the second hour of the morning after, live on this Friday. Welcome all of, all, all of our terrestrial radio affiliates. I am Ben Stevens. So let's take a look at those WNBA odds right now, live on the FanDuel Sportsbook. As we just shared, the Chicago Sky, the top team in the league, the reigning WNBA chances, but Las Vegas, your favorites right now at plus 155 still, ahead of Chicago at plus 320, the second best price. And again, Keep an eye on Seattle at plus 410. Connecticut in that fourth spot, plus 460 in the odds. The four best odds match the four best teams right now in the WNBA. Almost in exact order, except the aces ahead of the sky. Now, Vegas has lost five of their last seven games. So keep an eye on what Las Vegas is doing at the moment. I think you could make an argument for value on the sky once again to win back-to-back titles, a very difficult thing to do, but at plus 320 in the storm at plus 410 
as well. Something about that Sue Bird mojo in her final year in the WNBA. Speaking of Las Vegas, the Aces, that's where they play their basketball. Also the site of Summer League. We had two great games to start off Las Vegas' action in Summer League last night, including the Detroit Pistons and the Toronto Raptors. Now the Pistons with Jaden Ivey out there on the floor and Buddy Bayheim and Isaiah Stewart and Jalen Duran, although no Cade Cunningham or Sadiq Bay on the roster, but not playing last night. The Pistons were a two and a half point favorite when we spoke to you at the end of the show yesterday, bumped up to three and a half, a very good number as the Pistons win by three, covering that two and a half point spread, but not the three and a half. Jaden Ivey, 20 points in his debut with Detroit. Also a battle of one versus three yesterday, Paolo Bancaro and Jabari Smith for the Magic and Rockets respectively. Paolo Bancaro getting the better of that matchup, a big win for Orlando. We'll look at the future odds for Summer League at a later date. But I will make this point about the Brooklyn Nets. Andrew Bocigalupo, our outstanding producer on this show throughout this week, wanted me to tell you the 12-1 to 1 price on Brooklyn for the Las Vegas Summer League Far too long. Tons of value on the Nets Summer League roster. We go to the streets of New York City. A Manhattan tennis tournament up next with Penny and the Bets. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? McAfee show what did you think of the young wide receiver what did you think of Watson what do you think of Sammy what do you think about uh, going into the season any thoughts on what you're gonna have to focus on or anything like that definitely look the part all three of them all three of the guys who drafted all uh, you know have, have physical gifts obviously the top two picks are all uh, bigger um, Dobbs and Watson but uh, but the seventh round pick got a lot of stuff to him the sports grid network the early line. Some more games to bet on out there. And actually a futures market, DRS, would you believe it, for the Vegas Summer League champion. OKC and the Detroit Pistons are co-favorites at plus 750. Portland 12 to 1 alongside the Nets at the same number, with the top five being rounded out. A couple of teams really all in that scenario at a 14 to 1. Orlando, Memphis, Indiana, and the Philadelphia 76ers. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Another sort of, you know, piece of this whole puzzle was the fact that we thought that Jimmy Garoppolo could end up leaving San Francisco and maybe going to Carolina too. I suppose yeah. Cleveland I mean, is potentially an option there over Brissett, but I feel like Cleveland feel I, it's you know kind of shakily committed to Brissett at this point if Watson doesn't play. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Minus 104 for the Orioles, minus 112 for Silseth and the Angels. This total at eight and a half. I think some runs tonight, Scotty. Yeah, I mean, both of these guys are uh, basically terrible, these pitchers. So I'm, I'm guessing lots of runs. And I'm going to go with the Angels on the streets tonight against the O's. And I've, I hit the O's last night. I've been hitting the O's. I've been hitting the Tigers. The Sports Grid Network.
championship weekend at Wimbledon is on the horizon, but some people were saying on the streets of Manhattan, that was the real tennis tourney you need to pay attention to. Welcome back to the morning after on this Friday. Our executive producer here in the mornings, our field producer for Benny and the Bets, Alex Fasano joins us now, where we took to the streets earlier this week, Faz, to go around and see the tennis skills of New Yorkers. It was a very exciting time. Oh, of course. Happy to be here, Ben, with you on another Friday. Feeling a little scruffy in need of a haircut, but still a feel-good Friday here with you. And yes, it was a fun time out on the streets, uh, having a little tournament of tennis of our own. Do you think we saw a lot of talent out there on Broadway? Yeah, I do. I really do. There, we played a different form of tennis. We didn't set up a net. We didn't go back and forth like ping pong. We had people show us their skill in terms of just handling a racket and the tennis ball bouncing on it. And there were some people out there, as you'll see in our video here in just a couple of moments, that were really, really good. Very steady hands. I would trust them to do brain surgery on me. Oh, yeah, definitely, Ben. We saw people volley, like you said, the tennis ball. And also, you gave them a little curveball, asking them some tennis questions while volleying. So there was a little bit of some talent out there on Broadway. So take a seat for ourselves and see what kind of talent there was on the streets of New York. So everybody take a deep breath, sit back, relax. And enjoy this week's episode of Benny and the Bets. It's championship weekend at Wimbledon. I'm wearing all white. Today we made our own competition in the streets of New York to see the tennis skill of the people. Let's see what they got. Let's see how many bounces you can keep it up in the air. Are you ready? One, two, three. Oh, he switched it. Just keep it up. Oh, my goodness. No, we got it. Keep it. Yep, yep. Uh-oh. Not a great start. Oh, he bounces back. What a play. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. He's flipping it now. He's he's getting cocky. Wow, this is easy for you. How are you so good at this? I'll, I'll, I don't Play know. Tennis? No. Have you ever played tennis in the streets of New York before? Nope. Where is Wimbledon located? In England. It is. Do you think the pressure of playing in our tennis competition here on the streets of New York rivals that of center court at Wimbledon? Yes. That was the right answer. Thank you so much. Normally at Wimbledon, the fans don't get on the court, but you've dealt with that here on the streets of New York. Oh, I'm a little advanced. What a ferocious pace you're on. Is this easy for you? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. You're doing great, though. Oh, very casual. A steady wrist, if you will. I don't want to say it, but I do play tennis. Walk and talk? You want to have an interview while I'm doing this? No? You think you could beat me in tennis? Uh, not to sound cocky, but at first glance, no, but yeah. Oh, this is fantastic. Great form. I like where we're at. I'm like dodging this as it's happening live motion like it's the Matrix. Is there a prize if I get anything? My respect. That's fair. What are you going to do? Oh, he went through the legs. He did it. He did it. Style points and another one. Flip it around. Do you think you could be a Wimbledon champion yourself? No. Okay, but you look pretty good to me right now. When you woke up this morning, did you expect to do this on the streets of New York? No, no way. Are you having fun? Yeah, for sure. Do you think New York City is the best place to play tennis in the world? Absolutely. Sure, have you ever played in Wimbledon? Yeah. All right, one more through the... Oh, 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 oh. oh no, not in the trash, not in the trash. You got a little too fancy for your own good. I, I was feeling good. You look good. Thank you. All right, who do you think is going to win Wimbledon this year? No idea. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, what? Oh, oh, oh. And she keeps it away from the people. You think it might be Novak Djokovic, Rafael Nadal? Uh, Nadal. Nadal. Then Nadal. Nadal. Nadal, yeah. Nadal. Um, uh, Nadal. Uh, not Novak. Uh, Djokovic. Let's Djokovic. go. Oh, Djokovic. You do? Yeah, he wants to go. You think Djokovic over Nadal? Yeah. I don't watch tennis. Okay, but well, you're just really good at this. Uh, I guess. 97, 98, 99, 100. You did it, dude. How long do you think you could do this for? Like two hours? Yeah. Probably like 10 minutes. It's like 114 now. He's going to show off. Give me that. <laughs> ben, I mean, you got a little angry there at that last guy, but let's just uh, preface this by saying we filmed this earlier in the week back when yeah. all the players were available. Obviously, we saw the news yesterday, Rafael Nadal withdrawing thanks to his abdominal tear. But Ben, we had some really talented people out there. That guy said he played in Wimbledon. I don't, I don't think I believe him. Yeah, I don't think he actually played at Wimbledon, but maybe he did in a past life, and we just didn't know about it at the time of the recording. You saw those odds on Rafa, what could have been. But our great partner on this show, Fasano, as you well know, the FanDuel Sportsbook, is refunding all straight bets 
on Rafael Nadal to win Wimbledon outright. So if you bet Rafa, you'll get your money back on FanDuel. That's what the good people do because it was a bad beat alert. We wish Rafa the best. We wish him a speedy recovery. And now we just have to see, will it be Djokovic or Cam Nori Fasano taking on Nick Kyrgios in that final in the Wimbledon's men's side on Sunday? Yeah, definitely. Shout out to the FanDuel Sportsbook for the people helping us out with that Nadal uh, tickets. But hey, you know what? The squad rode with Nadal plus 290 live when he was going up against Fritz. So, Huge. hey, we, we got a little something from Nadal. So shout out to Nadal. Hope you're doing okay. We'll see you at the U.S. Open. Let's hope. Okay. But let's get into what really the people are all about in this segment. And that's the producer pick. So let's start with our guy, Andrew Bocci Galupa, a.k.a. Bocci. He's going with the Yankees money line at minus 140. I actually think it's moving now at minus 154. So he's oh. riding with his team, Bronx all the way. I mean, they had a tough fought game against the Red Sox last night, but hey, they ended up winning. So if they could do it again, Bocce cashes. It's a big, big play for Bocce. You know that he is biased in everything that he does on this show, but I respect it. You know, he's going with the Yanks. It's not the hardest money line price we have seen for the pinstripes only minus 140 for a Yankees team that's pretty much been favored in every game this year all right botch I'm not mad at it let's keep it rolling at Fenway Park is what he's saying right there Fenway Park hey exactly you know they are the best team in baseball for a reason Ben so let's see if Bocce can catch this one tonight myself You know oh. me, Ben. I'm going with a futures ticket. I've hit a lot of futures over these last couple of months. If you go back to my shot real quick, you can see up on the screen here, this yep. little uh, piece of paper hanging in the background has all the future plays for the NBA championship, yep. the national title, the national basketball championship, and the NHL Stanley Cup. And I hit three out of four, not to brag. Oh. But let's get into a futures ticket that I'm taking for the producer play. And that's the Buffalo Bills to be the number one seed in the AFC at plus 280. Now, Ben, last year, they were the three seed. The year before, they were the two seed. I think they're due for a number one spot this year. And, hey, weeks 9 to 12, they have a nice, easy stretch of games. The Jets, the Lions, that's the weeks when we start to see the turn. The Bills can catch this by week 16, week 17. You have a futures ticket cashed before the season even ends. I really like the play because Buffalo is the favorite to win the AFC at plus 350. But the ticket that Fasano now has is a regular season market. And we discussed it with FanDuel's Ryan Williams earlier in our first hour of this show. The reason Buffalo is a favorite of a dollar and a half ahead of Kansas City is because of the AFC East. They are minus 180 to win that division. The path is there for Buffalo to own the top spot in the AFC playoff picture. A good cap there, Fasano, in my opinion. Thank you very much, Ben. Hey, I'm working on these shows. I learned from the best. You know, that's what we do no, here on Sports Bay. We bleed the winning edge. Okay, fine. But let's go into our guy, JJ, our intern, JJ. He's going against Bocce, in a sense, with Xander yep. Bogart's two-plus bases. I mean, he's a Boston guy through and through, so I gave him enough uh, slack for that, hearing about that earlier in the day. But... You know, Xander Bogarts can get his two bases easily, and Bocci can still win his bet, so maybe everybody gets a win today. They are college classmates together, but here rivals. I would dare to say that J.J. is not rooting for Bocci's bet. He is not rooting for Yankees money line minus 140. No. However, no. you are correct, Fasano. That's the beautiful thing about props. If Bogarts has two or more total bases, it doesn't necessarily mean the Red Sox win and the Yankees lose. Exactly. Hey, we want everybody to win here on the morning after, right, Ben? That's what we're all about. That's what we do. We bleed the winning edge, as Alex Fasano said. And winners for the weekend. A championship weekend at Wimbledon with Pam Aldonado up next. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network.
people are going to the betting window betting and betting them now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full them. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And Godwin being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we have to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. But boy, you wanna give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing a little Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line. Finally, we've seen the resolution come in after months of wondering as Baker goes to Carolina in exchange for just a conditional 2024 fifth-round pick. It's the move that was supposed to happen, right, Kevin? This is what we were anticipating for months, and the urgency that we read about just a few weeks ago finally came to fruition here early in July. You get him in ahead of camp. Only on Sports Grid. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The Pat McAfee Show. It was it was awesome. It was nuts. Uh, I mean, yeah, I I never imagined that it would be what it is. But uh, it, there were thousands of people chanting, and uh, I was I was pumped up. I, I really couldn't even feel the pain in my uh, the ruptured tendon. I, I was I was walking on it and putting weight on it, even though it yeah it, it, was, it was numb. And I uh, I was I was I was ready. To eat. I could have eaten nails, and I I, I, I was hungry. <laughs> the Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. You know, Judge, uh, last night is 30th, and, you know, this guy is just absolutely raking home runs and RBIs. And but Judge has had a great year. He's playing himself into a $300 million, maybe $400 million contract. We're going to have to see. And inevitably, the guy who's going to make the key decision on whether he stays or goes is going to be Aaron Judge. I think we could be headed toward another Freddie Freeman type situation. The Sports Grid Network. The singular men's semifinal match on this Friday at Wimbledon is now underway. Novak Djokovic and Cam Norrie in breaking news live here on the morning after. Cam Norrie has taken the first game of this match against the heavy favorite in Novak Djokovic. So much to get to around Wimbledon for this championship weekend on the horizon. So joining us now is the Yahoo Sportsbooks, Pam Maldonado, here to cap everything you need to know for a Wimbledon weekend where finals are on the line. Pam, thank you so much for joining us here on The Morning After. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, And it is a bit of a correction that Nori did win the first game, but he broke Novak to win the first game. So that's interesting. (laughs) Right out of the gate. Very big big stuff there out of Cam Nori in the (laughs) only men's semifinal match today, Pam, because, of course, We got the breaking news yesterday afternoon. Rafael Nadal has had to withdraw from Wimbledon due to an abdominal injury. We saw him laboring in that great quarterfinal against Taylor Fritz. But when you saw that news come down the wire yesterday, how surprised were you that Nadal was unable to play in his scheduled semifinal against Nick Kyrgios? I'd say I was like 70, 30 percent, 70, 30 surprised that Nadal would doubly deed because in, if for Nadal, it's for Nadal. We're talking about Rafa Nadal, who f- plays yeah. through injury almost every match that he plays. In order for him to WD, that must mean that this is severe and clearly enough for him to say, I'm going to surrender the opportunity for a calendar slam. Because these opportunities, not just within the big three, just these opportunities to win 
a calendar slam to even contend for a calendar slam. They're very slim to numb. So it's a really big deal to not see Nadal finish it out. We clearly would have loved for it to happen. However, if he is deciding that he has to sit back and rest, then it is for the greater good of his of the longevity in the game. Maybe he wants to be here for another year or two. Maybe he wants to get to 25 majors. Whatever the case, it was enough for him to say, I can't do it right now. We saw that in the quarterfinal match against Taylor Fritz. Somehow, some way, continuously, Rafa finds a way to survive in advance. That's how devastating this injury must be if he cannot muster it up for the semifinal today. So Nick Kyrgios advances to the Wimbledon final on the men's side. He awaits the winner of Novak Djokovic and Cameron Norrie. Another breaking news update for you. We're tied at one game apiece now. And Novak Djokovic back live. A minus, yeah, he did. A minus 1,200 favorite on that live money line. Entering this match, Pam, Novak was minus 1,500. So we see what the odds expect out of this semifinal against Nori today. Why has Novak been so dominant throughout this run at Wimbledon? Djokovic is so great at Wimbledon because he part of the what makes the big three the big three is they have so much variety in their game. The Roger Federer, Novak Djokovic, and Nadal, they all know how to implement a slice. They have a drop shot. They know how to do the angled shots. They know how to handle pressure points. They all have a big serve. They all have a great return game. That's no different here in this case, even though it is on grass. Grass is a faster surface, so you have a lot of players who do who the players who excel here on grass are those with a big serve. Well, Djokovic is the best returner in the world because he is able to not only get the ball back, but he gets the ball back with pace. He gets the ball back with depth at the baseline. So it's putting players automatically in a defense as opposed to being on offense, having an offensive shot off of their serve. So already they're just like right out of the gate in trouble. Djokovic has a serve of his own. Um, he. And you also want to talk about like what makes the big three awesome is they have such strong mindsets. They know where to apply the pressure, where to take off the pressure to let the mistakes come to them. It's just a different ball game when you're playing against these three. And Djokovic is the greatest on grass right now. That's it. That's all. And of all time. As you look at it, a minus 1500 money line favorite entering a match. Obviously, a very strong indication Novak Djokovic should make quick work of Cam Nori, but I found this odds very, very interesting, Pam, when you saw for straight sets, for either player to win a set, the no had the minus money at minus 152. Do you think this semifinal Friday match will be in straight sets in favor of Novak Djokovic? There's absolutely a chance that Djokovic can win this in straight sets. Now, the juice for that was minus 180. That's a big, hefty price I would not pay. I would not have paid that um, because... What Cam Norrie has going for him is the hometown crowd. He is a British player, and he's actually the first British man to reach the Final Four at Wimbledon since Andy Murray won the title back in 2016. So this crowd is heavily going to be for him. They would have probably been for him anyway because the crowd is typically never on the side of Djokovic. But now you're putting a Brit British player here in the Final Four. It's a big deal. So the crowd is going to help him in spots. Maybe the first set gets done quick. This is a best of five. So Nori has three opportunities here to at least keep this competitive. Maybe a tie break, maybe 7-5. And if he gets lucky and plays things correctly and has the patience and the help of the crowd, he could pull off a set. So entering Friday's match, Novak Djokovic was minus 380 to win the men's championship outright. Nick Kyrgios, the second best price at plus 300. Not taking anything away necessarily from Cam Norrie, but let's assume that Novak Djokovic advances to the final against Kyrgios. You see that minus 380 price there, Pam. What do you think Novak Djokovic's money line would be against Kyrgios in the final? It would be about the same. The expectation is already that Djokovic, it, that we will in the final see a Djokovic Kyrgios. So I don't expect the odds to be changing that much unless this happens, unless Djokovic's match against Nori happens to go five, which I don't foresee happening. Then maybe the odds might shift just a little bit, but for the most part, they should be hanging around steady. How does, how do Djokovic and Kyrgios match up for that men's final on Sunday? You know, your your question, I, I don't quite yet have an answer. <laughs> this is a bit yeah. of a wild card situation because Kyrgios 
This semifinal that he would have had against Nadal, that would have been his first major semifinal in his career. And now he skipped over that experience, and now he's going straight into a final against the arguably the best grass court player of not our generation of all time in your first major final in your career. He just did a press conference this morning, and he talked about how he had an hour of sleep last night because he was nervous. He's anxious to get to the final already, and so we don't know. He's a wild card. Yeah. Kyrgios, as good of a raw talent as he is, as he has, his serve is amazing. He does have powerful ground strokes. He's never been here. And you're talking about somebody, Djokovic, who has not only been here dozens and dozens of times, but has won majors a couple of dozen times. He, I mean, he has 20 majors under his belt. He's chasing number 21 to try to catch up to Rafa Nadal. So experience is going to largely come into play here. Um, it's a bit of a wild card. I can't wait to see what the odds are and try to rack it up a little bit more and break it down even further. The old rest versus rust debate. Nick Kyrgios into the final, but didn't have to play in the semifinal against Rafael Nadal. We'll see what happens Sunday on the men's side at Wimbledon. The women's final is tomorrow, but let's go back to the semifinals yesterday. Simona Halep entered Thursday's action as the favorite to win the women's championship outright. She got swept in straight sets by Alina Rybakina in that semifinal matchup yesterday. What was your takeaway from what you saw at Wimbledon yesterday, Pam? I was largely disappointed with Simona Halep's performance. I was really rooting for her as a fan of the double. I'm a big fan of Halep. Um, I love her. Little jalapeno, I'll call her. But she, <laughs> her serve let her down. She had eight double faults. If she didn't have that, it could have been nerves. Um, it just, she never, it never clicked for her in this match. And those eight double faults really came into play. It really gave her Bikina, an easy win. She didn't really have to work for it. She really yeah. just had to stand there and Simona Halla bit herself, kicked herself in the foot. Um, so I'm disappointed with that performance, but I hope that it's also, there's a lot of positives to come into this. She's trying to rebuild on her career and make a bit of a comeback story. She's well on her way to doing that. So she is still a threat in any major tournament um, here in the next few, in the next year or so. I'm looking forward to this final, though, because Ange Jabor, she was one of the tournament favorites coming into this, and she's showing why she is a contender to win it all. Yeah. Ange Jabor is the favorite for tomorrow's final on the women's side at Wimbledon, minus 154, against Elena Rybakina, who is plus 128 as the money line underdog for tomorrow's final. Pam, as you look at the money line and maybe any other areas for that women's championship tomorrow, in your mind, what is the best bet? I would lean to Ange Jabor getting it done because there's this, this match is going to be a stylistic contrast for the women's final. Jabor has a lot of variety in her game. She has the depth. She has the pace. She has the top spin. Um, she knows how to drop shot. She, that's generally really good when it comes to majors, especially in a final. But Rubikina is coming into this rested, and she's coming into this with a lot of power. She, that's what helped get her up to this point. But when you give me a player that has variety in their game, I'm always going to back that. So it's Jabor for me. Well, we go back to the men's semifinal right now. Another live update for you. Tied at two games all. And Novak Djokovic on that live line. Now a minus 3,000 favorite against Cam Nori. Is there any chance, Pam, that we see Novak Djokovic under a $2 favorite at any point today live? No, he would have to lose the first two sets in order for that to happen. Wow. <laughs> that would be something because I don't think we'll get that plus 290 price. We all jumped on for Rafael Nadal in his quarterfinal against Taylor Fritz on Wednesday afternoon. Pam Maldonado of the Yahoo Sportsbook joining us here, getting you ready for this championship weekend at Wimbledon. Pam, thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the finals matches that we will see. Absolutely. Have a good one. We round out the show on this Friday with a renewed focus on Major League Baseball. Our guy Jim Saunas back on the program for the Saunas Sandlot Slate. All that you need to know from a great card on this Friday and into the weekend. The morning after rolls on live on this Friday on Sports Grid, Sirius XM, Channel 159. Come back and join us.
Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Gam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. The Pat McAfee Show. Here we are, Wednesday, July 6th, 2022. Baker Mayfield is going to... <gasps> the Carolina Panthers. Wow. Wow. Congrats to the Carolina Panthers, who for another season are taking a shot on who is going to be our franchise quarterback, and we will run the carousel until we find our guy. Maybe it's Baker. Shout out to the Queen City. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. You see that 9-1 to ticket on Roy McIlroy. Do you agree that Rory should be such a short favorite for next week's Open. No, I, I don't, Benny. I mean, he hasn't won a major since 2014. He's playing at a really high level, but so too are a lot of other guys. Matty Fitzpatrick, Scotty Scheffler, Will Zalatoris. So I can't agree that Roy McIlroy is at 9-1. to one. Look, he's playing motivated, but at 9-1, to one, I don't think it's a great number. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Oh my gosh, like if this is their end game for 14 games next season... There's no winning, is there? There's no winning for the Cleveland Browns this season. I just, there, there's no way that they make the playoffs. There's no way that they win 10 games. I, I think there is a chance that they are the worst team in this division, depending on the quarterback play that the Pittsburgh Steelers get. You know, if... if... The Sports Grid Network. Back right here on the morning after on Sports Grid, we look forward to the Friday Major League Baseball slate and the rest of the weekend with Jim Saunas of Number Fire and FanDuel. The Saunas Sandlot slate to set you up for what we hope will be a very profitable weekend. Jim, thank you so much for joining us here on this Friday on the morning after. Thank you, Ben. It's nice to be back. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, and it is great to have you back. I feel like it's been too long, but I look forward to this segment right here to round out our week on TMA. And let's begin with a Big Apple affair between the New York Mets and the Miami Marlins. Yesterday, the Mets routing the fish 10-0 at City Field. Today, a pretty good pitching matchup between Chris Bassett and Pablo Lopez. Jim, how do you evaluate the New York Mets, where we stand right now, that Scherzer is back and DeGrom is on his way back? as we near the all-star break here in this Major League Baseball season. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty fun team overall. Obviously, that offense had, like, that really bad rut where they just decided yeah. that scoring runs was unfun um, and was not recommended by any means. But now they're getting a lot better, as you said, as they get healthier. And I think that the more important thing is that the guys are looking good because the injuries that they had with Scherzer and DeGrom, those are injuries that can leave you a little bit, uh, some unknown in the air for sure. But Scherzer lights out in his return back to Grom and his rehab stints look pretty good as well. I think that's all positive. Right now, 
even before adding DeGrom back in, the Mets are fourth in my power rankings, which is pretty yeah. high among the teams in the National League. Uh, they rank second there behind just the Dodgers. So my numbers do like them. That accounts for the offensive slump that they had and accounts for Scherzer being back and looking pretty good. All things considered, I'm pretty into this team. Um, I think that uh, the market for today is pretty appropriate on them, especially given there's some unknown around Chris Bassett coming off the COVID list. Don't really know how much that may have impacted him, but I think overall, this is a team that we can feel pretty good about based on what they've done so far, what we, we can expect them to, to going forward. The Mets getting pushed, though, in the National League East by one of the best teams in baseball in the last month and a half, the Atlanta Braves. A minus 255 favorite today for Atlanta against their divisional foe in the Washington Nationals. Good luck, Chuck. Charlie Morton on the bump for the Braves today, Jim, as you evaluate the pitching staff for Atlanta and Charlie Morton in this matchup against the Nats today, what do you see? Uh, I'm seeing something very different than the market, apparently, because I liked the Braves quite a bit, and it seems like there's been some action on the Nationals. This one uh, was 290 this morning. The uh, money line for the Braves is down to plus 260, I believe, is the last that I saw, and a little bit worried about that because it was 267 last night. I got some good movement on that. Now it's moving the back the other way. And Morton's strikeout prop is also moving the wrong direction. So I'm seeing something different because what I've seen Morton so far, I think is pretty legit. He's had an awesome six start stretch where he's been striking out everybody. And I think that's explainable because he has had a change in his approach. He's using fewer forcing fastballs in that six start sample. And that forcing fastball was getting torched. A lot of hard contact, uh, a lot of fly balls against that pitch. So it's good to see him cut back on it. Actually, at his lowest usage on that pitch, the entire season is most recent time out. So I think he's making good changes, which to me makes the improvements he has shown a bit more believable. So I like Morton, which in turn makes me like the Braves' money line for today, despite it being minus 260, which is a very big number. I still think there is value in that number where it's currently at. So... I'm a bit confused, Ben, honestly. I think that the Braves pretty legit. I think that Eric Fetty has faced a pretty soft schedule recently, is due for some regression. So you combine that together, I actually think I'm uh, going against the market and liking the Braves, uh, even at a, a big number, despite some money coming in on Morton strikeout under and on the Nationals money line. Yeah, still a pretty big price, though, at minus 255. A strong indication Atlanta should at least be able to win this baseball game today against the Nationals. So let's go big picture on the Braves, the reigning World Series champs. You mentioned how you feel about the Mets and what your numbers say where they stack up in the National League. Right now, the Dodgers are the favorites to win the NL pennant at plus 220. The Mets behind them at plus 350, and there's Atlanta. Do you consider the Braves on the same level as you do the Dodgers and the Mets? They're right there. They're actually third in my power rankings for the National League as well. So actually the exact same ranking order as what the market has right now. And I actually think there's some room for some upward. There's a, a bigger ceiling potential for the Braves than you might see for some other teams because Ron Acuna Jr. hasn't been playing at full strength most of this year. But since he came back from that most recent, you know, where he had a week or so off, He's looked good. The results have not been good, but he's running again. He's had four stolen base in the past week. He's had some hard hit balls that haven't really led to extra base hits. So what I think I'm seeing is maybe some improved health for Acuna coming off that time off, which would be a great thing for yeah. them because if you give them a fully, fully form, like 100% Ronald Acuna Jr., this offense will be better than what it's been so far, and it's already been pretty good. So you give the improvements to Morton, you give them a healthier Acuna, Acuna I think that sets up pretty well. So although they're third in my power rankings right now, uh, I think that there is potential for upward movement. I would still prefer the Mets straight up going forward because I love that rotation. I think the offense should be good enough. But I agree with what you said. I think that they're in the same tier. The Dodgers, I would put a tier above both these teams. So it's Dodgers tier one for me. And then tier one B would be Mets and Braves. But to me, both those teams pretty even with where things stand right now. Let's look at the tiers in the American League now. The New York Yankees, the favorites, at plus 175. The Astros, only 75 cents behind at plus 250. Then there's the rest of the American League. It almost feels, Jim, at times we are already seeing a two-team race for the American League pennant. Who do you think could be that third team to challenge either Houston or New York? I think it could be the Rays which might feel kind of weird given that they're in a very tough division. Obviously the Jays and the Red Sox are, are very good as well, but like, just like overall team quality, 
I really don't hate the Rays. This offense has been, I would say, frustrating, underwhelming, annoying so far this year, but they have upside because, again, they might get Tyler Glass now back at some point in the in the future before we wrap up the season. That'd be a great thing. Shane McClanahan is pitching really well. They've got a lot of talent on this team with Ron- Wander Franco being back. I think that there's upside in that team. We talked about that with the Braves. There's upside there right. if things break their way. And I think we could see that with the Rays as well. They've got good components to their team. It's just a question of whether or not all those components will hit in a way that is conducive to them reaching their soon. I think they could. So I don't think any team will really push the Astros and the Yankees. My numbers do agree. Those are the best two teams in baseball, not just the American League. But yep. I think if I had to pick a third team, I'd probably lean towards the Rays just because there is a lot of upside in the players that they have. And when you think about it, nobody's going to catch the Yankees in the American League East, but the Rays still have the fourth best record in the AL. The Red Sox have the fifth best record in the AL. And the Blue Jays, follow my lead here, have the sixth best record in the American League. So all three of those teams in the American League East certainly will factor into the wild card race in the AL. Speaking of those Red Sox, speaking of those Yankees, the second of four games in this weekend series at Fenway Park today. Jim, do you think this old rivalry between New York and Boston is the best weekend series? I think it's pretty fun uh, just because both these teams are good and they're playing good baseball right now. And if you can get both those teams playing good baseball, it's going to be pretty hard to turn that down. And also, like, it's a lot of other weird matchups throughout this week. Like, there are some that I think are kind of fun, but, like, the overall yeah. public's not going to be super enthused by. Like, Phillies Cardinals, to me, is actually a pretty fun matchup. I like that series a lot, but you're never going to match the the national intrigue you get with the, Yankees, with the Yankees Red Sox. And I do think that the betting markets on this game are pretty interesting. I am largely in line with what they're saying. A little bit of value on the Red Sox money line here. Um, I'm not super into Connor Siebel based on what we've seen in the first two games, but his AAA number is a lot better. He did a great job of suppressing hard contact down there. So maybe you do want to buy into the Red Sox money line. But overall, uh, a fun series overall. Nestor Cortez, despite some regression recently, is still a fun player to watch too. So, I mean, I guess I will pick Red Sox Yankees over Astros A's if you're going to make me, Ben, uh, by, by a very slim margin there. What about the Cardinals, and the Phillies, like you mentioned. The Redbirds trying to turn it around now back in St. Louis. Uncle Chuck, we had good luck, Chuck, Charlie Moore. Now, Uncle Chuck, Adam Wainwright, on the bump for the Redbirds today. They've lost six of their last seven. Can they stifle this little skid against the Phils today? I think they can, Ben. I actually like the Cardinals' money line for today. It's a plus 108 right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. And I think there's actually good value on that because of Adam Wainwright. You mentioned the fact that um, he's been pitching pretty well recently despite the fact the team has not been that good and i buy into it personally wainwright has been making some changes um he's had his sinker velocity up across his past eight starts and in those eight starts he has a 3.58 skill interactive era his strikeout rate is actually kind of high in that time too at 21 percent, which is weird for wainwright uh but this phillies offense with no bryce harper i think has exceeded my expectations overall but still not what they were. The active roster has a 94 WRC plus against righties once you take Harper out of there. So I've been betting on guys against the Phillies quite a bit here recently. I think that that does continue for today with Wainwright. Not looking at the strikeout number, but the money line for me at plus one away does provide value given what Wainwright has done, given how you know much we downgrade this offense in general with no yeah. Harper. I think that that makes sense. It does make the Cardinals a good value bet for today on the money line. St. Louis avoiding a four-game sweep against Atlanta yesterday, not losing to those Braves. So maybe they're starting to build that momentum back. And despite the recent struggles, only two and a half back of the Brewers in the National League Central. Speaking of the Brew Crew, another area you're looking today against their opponent, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yeah, we got JT Brubaker starting for the Pirates here for today. I like the under on his strikeout prop at five and a half, which is minus 136 now again. A little bit of movement against me here, which is annoying for sure and a bit <laughs> puzzling and concerning for sure. But I do still think that there is value in the under on this one. Brubaker's gotten to six strikeouts pretty often recently, including against the same Brewers team, but now faces them for a second consecutive start. He goes on the road, and we've seen Brubaker leaning more on his sink. That's a good thing for him as a pitcher, as a an actual real-world pitcher. You do want Brubaker leaning on that sinker. It's led to uh, better 
better batted ball numbers and stuff like that, but it has not led to a lot of strikeouts. In the eight starts with more sinkers, Brubaker's strikeout rate is at 19%. So you've seen him get to six strikeouts in each of his past two starts. Uh, he had seven a couple starts before that, but the overall numbers with more sinkers haven't been as encouraging now facing the same team for the second consecutive start. I do like the under at five and a half. I, I'm guessing that the most recent games have led to that action on the over for this one, but I disagree. I think that maybe you hold off, bet it later, see if we get some more movement on the over here, but eventually I would take the under at five and a half. Um, hopefully you can get it at, at better than minus 136, but if it does steady out there, you see some leveling in the market, I would buy in at that point. Another under on a K prop for Chad Cool, but I want to finish, Jim, with the hottest team in baseball right now, the Seattle Mariners, who have won five straight games and 13 of their last 16. They're back at an even 500. Can the M's keep the good times rolling today? I think so. This this one has moved. It was plus 104. It's now minus 104, and I agree with that oh. movement. So thankfully, Ben, the market finally on my side with this one. <laughs> uh, but I still think there's value on the Mariners here. I've got their win odds actually on 57% because... George Kirby's good, man. I think that that's not a super big hot take, but uh, he's been using his curveball more. That's a pitch that does suppress hard contact, does limit fly balls, which is what he was struggling with earlier on. That should help keep the Blue Jays' offense in check. Whereas Ross Stripling, he's fine. But I think that in this situation, I feel pretty good about the Mariners here. So it has moved. It's minus 104 now. I do still think there's value on the Mariners here, and I think that hot streak keeps going. And finally, again, the market on my side for this one today. A lot of people looked at Seattle before the year got started as a potential AL wildcard team. The Mariners playing much better baseball as of late. Jim Sonnes and the Sonnes Sandlot Slate, as always. We thank you for your time and have a great weekend. We round out the show here on the morning after up next. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Panthers host week number one in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Yes, that familiar yep. foe, the Cleveland Browns. And the Browns only a slight one point favorite as of right now. That total relatively low, 42 and a half. It's funny how things work out, huh? Baker Mayfield is new home in Carolina, and then he gets to play Cleveland that opening week of the NFL. The biggest question with me with Baker Mayfield is going to be that right. locker room. The Sports Grid Network. The Pat McAfee Show. All these little aliens land, and every ex-football player says, they got no jaw. <laughs> Put a helmet on and just start spearing people. It would feel good to make a few tackles. Oh, back in the day, tackles too. You got Ed Reed flying. Yeah. <laughs> Troy Paul Maher, I go, boom. AJ just leading with the head, everybody. I mean, the future looks bright for us humans. Hey, let's go, humans. Yeah. Come on. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Riccaro with your daily numbers game. Wimbledon, exciting as always. Americans acquitting very well, but that's not the issue. Business somewhat back to normal. The first day, the crowds were down about 7%, still 42,000. And a lot were talking about the limitations, some COVID, but the event canceled two years ago, limited seating last year. Certainly from a business perspective, nobody's worried. But the bottom line this year and the addition economically is the middle Sunday committed 
They know they're going to have events. The roofs also add to the fact that there will be no rain-out days for television. That allows the extra day not as a makeup day, but as a new revenue day. And it's generating significant dollars. Once we see the revenues at the end of Wimbledon, it'll be up significantly over the next year. Glad I'm going to Europe to see the end of it this week, folks. I'll keep you posted. Closing out our two hours together here, live on the morning after on this Friday to end out the day and end out the week here on TMA. Thank you for joining us all week and all day long here on this Friday. Sirius XM Channel 159 is where you've been listening to TMA and watching all across the Spiz Grizz Network. I am Ben Stevens. One final Wimbledon update for you here on this week. Cam Nori has taken the first set against Novak Djokovic in the men's semi-final that was plus money for both players to win at least one set there was an expectation with Djokovic being a very hefty favorite this could be done in straight sets monitor that live line we will be doing that all morning long here all across sports grid but we end with one final major league baseball bet that might be so crazy it could just work so before we say farewell for the week before we say goodbye it's time for another MLB best bet it's time for bye 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 The Baltimore Orioles, yes, you heard me correctly. The Baltimore Orioles are booked as a favorite tonight in Anaheim against the Angels, minus 134 on that money line. You might be thinking to yourself, what is this kid saying right now? The Orioles as a favorite laying a minus money price? Well, Baltimore as a favorite this year, 7-2, and two. not a large sample size. But the best winning percentage in all of Major League Baseball when booked as a favorite. Baltimore has won five straight games. Baltimore has won 40 games so far this year for a team that had a win total of 61 and a half before the season got started. Really low expectations for the O's and they are outpacing even the worst of them. Tyler Wells gets the start, by the way, for Baltimore tonight. He is their ace. He has won five straight decisions, and the Orioles are a perfect 7-0 in his last seven starts. What was that? Novak Djokovic minus 370. Jump in on that live number right now. Thank you for joining us here on the morning after all week long. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. We'll be back on Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern. I'm Ben Stevens. We'll talk then.